In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this really awesome monitor zoom transition right inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So before we jump into Adobe After Effects, we first need to capture our footage. So to begin with, we just need any random footage and this is going to be at the start of the transition before we zoom out of the monitor. Now, secondly, we need our monitor footage. So make sure you put your camera on a tripod, stop rolling the camera, and just make sure nothing is getting in the way of the monitor, the TV, the phone, whatever you're using to do this effect on. So in my example, I'm sitting to the side of a TV. I'm sitting in front, but off to the side. This is because if I pass in front of the TV, then I'm just gonna have to rotoscope myself out and that's gonna add a little bit of extra hassle to this effect. So to keep things nice and easy, just keep the monitor nice and interrupted in the background of the shot. So now that you've got that and you've left that rolling for a few seconds, we can jump into Adobe After Effects and we can begin with this effect. So in After Effects, you first want to make sure that you've got both of your clips on the timeline. So this clip here is the clip that's going to be on the TV. And then this clip here is where I'm going to transition out of. So I'm going to basically put this video here that's on screen now into this TV here. So to begin with that effect, I'm first going to create a brand new null object. So we'll go layer, new, null object, and that is going to create that null object and drop that on the top. Now from here, we're just going to use this pit whip tool here, making sure both videos are selected and we'll drag this pit whip and release that on top of null one. So essentially what we've done now is connected these two layers together. So whatever we do to the null object is going to affect both of these videos at the exact same time. Now from here, I'm just going to pull the scale of this video down. This is the video that's going to be in the TV. So we'll press S on the keyboard to load up scale and we'll pull the scale down to around 70, 72%, somewhere around there. It doesn't need to be perfect. And then we'll scroll over to the second video and we're going to increase the scale and we want to make sure we increase the scale so that this monitor here is roughly the same size as this video here. So an easy way to do this is to press T on the keyboard selecting the second video. That's going to load up opacity. We'll pull the opacity down. There we go. And then we'll press S on the keyboard and we'll increase the scale of this clip. Now you just want to move that over into position. It doesn't need to be perfect, just roughly the same size. We'll increase the scale again. And there we go. That is about right. That should do the trick for now. So we'll just pull the opacity back up again. So press T, pull the opacity up to 100%. And that's perfect. So from here, we're just going to swap the order of these clips around. So we're just going to pull the monitor zoom footage. That is this footage of the TV. We're going to pull that down. And there you go. You can see we've got our footage right there. Now from here, we're just going to go back to the very beginning of our clip. We're going to go back to the beginning of the composition. We'll go into null one, select this drop down arrow, select transform, and we've got scale and position. And we want to create a brand new keyframe on our position and our scale by selecting this stopwatch icon. Now we'll increase the scale so that this video now fills the entire screen. Then we're going to go roughly five or six seconds to the right and we'll pull the scale back down and we'll pull the position so that this second video is now filling our screen. It's super important here that you're adjusting the scale and the position from this tab. If you pull this here, you're at risk of moving the video and not the null object and that's going to mess up the effect. So just adjust all of your settings down here. Make sure that now sits back in the middle. And if we play this back, you'll notice we've got this really slow zoom out from the TV. And of course, this video is not exactly very perfect. It's not sitting in the right position. It's not filling that TV, but we'll clean that up later on. Don't worry about that for now. Now that is a soft zoom out. If you wanted to do a more aggressive pull out, then all you have to do is decrease the gap between those keyframes. So we'll pull the keyframes closer together and that is going to create a very short pull out. Of course, if you wanted that even faster, then you can just decrease the gap again. So there we go. We've now successfully completed that transition. Although the problem is the TV in the background that doesn't look realistic. It looks really messy and that's because we haven't actually filled the TV as you can see. So in order to correct that, we're going to add the corner pin effect onto this clip. So we'll select that random footage layer that's in the TV. We'll go to effects and presets and we'll search for corner pin. Now, if for any reason you can't find the effects and presets tab in After Effects, you want to go up to window, scroll down and find effects and presets and make sure that it is ticked. 
But once you've got that activated and you've searched for corner pin, you want to drop corner pin onto your screen footage. Now from here, you can see we've got upper left, upper right, lower left and lower right. So essentially what we are going to do here is we're going to place upper left. We'll select this icon here and we'll select the upper left corner of the TV screen. Then we'll scroll down and we'll do lower left and we'll select that lower left corner of the TV. Now we'll go to lower right and we'll go ahead and we'll move that so that it now sits in the lower right corner of the TV. And then we'll go to upper right and we'll move that into the upper right corner. Now, if we zoom out, you'll notice that looks a lot more realistic because it is now filling the screen. So if we play this back, you can see we've got this really awesome transition happening. Of course, though, because we have now changed the positioning of that corner in the top right, we can see the TV monitor creeping up here. So in order to correct that, we're just going to go to our first keyframes and we'll increase the scale a little bit further. So we'll increase that to 160 and it has now disappeared. So that is looking really awesome. We're almost there. Although the problem is that zoom out looks a little bit too crisp and therefore it doesn't look realistic. So we're going to add some motion blur onto this effect to really sell this effect. So we'll close everything down. We'll select all of our footage and you want to select motion blur. Although at the moment you can see I can't see motion blur. So we'll select toggle switches slash modes and we can now see the motion blur tab here. So select the motion blur icon and make sure that this icon here is blue. And if it's blue, it will be activated. And then when we play this back, you'll notice that has added that motion blur and that makes that transition even more realistic. Now that is the transition effectively now complete. Although if you wanted to add a little bit of character into that pullout, then we can go back into no one. And as you can see, we've got our first set of keyframes and we've got our second set of keyframes. What we're going to do is we're going to copy that second set of keyframes. So we'll highlight that, hold Command C, we'll move over and select Command V. So now that we've copied that second set of keyframes, we're going to change the third set of keyframes and we're going to zoom in just a little bit. So we'll zoom in to 58%. So as you can see, this is adding a very subtle bounce. Now, if you want to make that more subtle, then you can increase the gap between the second and the third keyframes. Or if you want that to be quite a quick bounce, then you can just shorten that gap. It's completely up to you. But adding a little bit of bounce makes it seem a little bit more imperfect and therefore more realistic. If you were filming this effect by hand, then you'd probably end up bouncing just a little bit. So adding a little bit of bounce into this transition, into this animation is going to make it seem more realistic. And there you go. That is the TV screen pullout transition. Thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and I will see you on the next video. See you there.